I'd like to show you how to work with my Magic Loss product. It comes in a 1 ounce and a 6 ounce bottle. This is the original UV resin for crafting and creating that I developed in order to use on polymer clay and other surfaces. This is a wonderful product because it dries in just a matter of a few minutes under the sun, direct sunlight or outdoor sunlight, not in your windowsill, or with my UV cure lamp. This is a 9 watt lamp that can be used anytime, day or night, cloudy days, rainy days, windy days, or just at night. Very convenient to have next to your workstation. Bake your clay first. It can be any type of clay, but here we're taking a foiled piece of clay. And you want some type of small, firm tray to use, either to carry outside in the sun or to put inside of your cure lamp. Once you work with the product, you have actually hours of working time as long as you're not under UV light. That's long wave UV light, not the type that tans your skin. You always add magic gloss from the center of your piece. Pour on just a little to start. You don't have to have a sidewall to hold it in. It's self-leveling and it will hold a bee. Notice that I put it on a piece of flattened scrap clay. This is an open-sided piece with nothing to contain the magic gloss. The reason I put it on a piece of scrap clay on my curing tray is because I don't want it sliding off as I pick it up to move it outdoors or under my light. And also, in the case of putting the product on very flat pieces of clay or paper, you want to raise it away from the surface so that the product doesn't touch the edge of your work tray and start to spread away from your project. Now, occasionally you might add too much by mistake. I usually let it just continue to overflow and cure it anyway. It can easily be filed or sanded away and cleaned up from the bottom where it doesn't cure and then you've got a beautifully finished product. Of course it's best if you don't add too much. Now without picking it up you might be able to tell that I've got a nice raised domed surface all the way up to the edges. This piece has beautiful texture on it so it'll probably hold the magic gloss in place right up against my edges. On flat smooth clay or other surfaces it's designed to dome and so it may pull in away from the edges as it cures. That's a normal occurrence. When that happens, after curing, add another layer or possibly even a third one curing between each application and then the product will reach the edges. Just try not to overflow it. It becomes very easy to tell how much is enough and how much is not enough. If you don't get a nice smooth glass-like self-leveling finish, it means you're not using enough of the product. You can continue to add layers to get a nice rounded cabochon effect. It usually doesn't have problems with bubbles, but if it does, I use an inexpensive butane torch and I pass it over this quickly. One, two, three. That will pop any surface bubbles. Deeper set projects may require a few more minutes to allow lower bubbles to rise to the surface and then you would pop them again before curing. It's very simple to work with this product. You can also use it with all kinds of inclusions, including glitters, angelina fibers, dried flowers and more. I'm just going to demonstrate how easy it is to mix in some glitter to create some special effects. This will thicken the product and as it dries the glitter will have a bit of a texture to it. If you desire a smooth glass-like finish simply add another layer after the first curing. Adding inclusions into your magic gloss will lengthen curing time. So usually in about five to ten minutes, not hours or days like other products, is enough to cure most magic gloss. It will feel very hard on the top, but it could be jelly soft in the underlying layers for up to as much as an hour. So just be very careful with it after you cure it. It can be drilled, carved, sanded, matted, buffed, and it can be brought back to crystal clear. So you can control if you want a lot of glitter or little glitter by adding more or less magic gloss. Let's take a look at a few finished samples. This is Magic Gloss applied to Mila Fiori clay that's been baked with a pendant and a, bis and a pill box. Here's an example of a slightly larger decor piece. If you're familiar with the Makumegani technique for polymer clay, this is Magic Gloss applied to the top layer of a decorative tin. This is one of my inkjet transfers. After it was baked, a small amount of glitter, iridescent glitter, was mixed into Magic Gloss and just placed right in these areas and cured. This left raised uneven surfaces that surrounded the angel in the picture. 
after curing, more layers were added until I got a nice, level, smooth, raised, round surface. Here's some more examples with the glitter. This was done with the groovy stamp. I did a technique called the Sutton Slice. You can find that in many of my books and videos. I filled the raised areas with, with Magic Gloss that was mixed with different colors of glitter. Just doing a few areas at a time, curing until I filled the entire piece. You can also use other things like the transfers and stickers, all types of inclusions, found objects. In this very small bezel, you might be able to tell that several layers of Magic Gloss were used to create a dimensional layered collage in a small setting. You can even use Magic Gloss without clay to make pieces that are translucent. With dried botanicals, you can stamp on it, you can color it with permanent marking pens, and this is just the very beginning of how to use this exciting product.